What is a flexible budget and how is it used? You already know that budgetary control is when organizations use budgets to control operations. They do this by comparing budgets to actual outcomes in order to determine if the organization's plans are being achieved. By analyzing the differences between the budget and the actual results, we can determine what the difference is and investigate the costs. We can also take corrective action when required. We do this by having a formalized reporting system which provides reports used to ensure budgetary control is in place and working. There are two types of reports, the static budget report, which we covered in another video, and a flexible budget report. We'll be covering the flexible budget report in this video. What is a flexible budget? It's a budget which adjusts for changes in the level of activity. This is very different from a static budget, which is unchanged from the level of activity at the time that the master budget was created. Recall that a static budget cannot be used to evaluate management's performance with regards to variable costs, which is a significant drawback of this type of budget report. Flexible budgets are more sophisticated and useful because it recognizes that variable costs change with the level of activity. The flexible budget therefore adapts to changes in the operations of the business. And we can create a flexible budget for every budget in the master budgeting process, such as sales, production, direct materials, or whatever. Let's use the same example we used to demonstrate the static budget, but now to demonstrate the flexible budget. Harrison Inc. expects to produce 4,000 units of their product during the current month. Let's say it's January. Budgeted variable manufacturing costs per unit are direct materials $9, direct labor $16, and overhead $20. Monthly budgeted fixed manufacturing overhead costs are $12,000 for depreciation and $6,000 for other fixed costs. In the current month, actual production was 4,800 units and the company incurred the following costs. Direct materials of $48,000, direct labor of $63,100, variable manufacturing overhead of $100,800, in addition, actual fixed costs were $12,000 for depreciation and $6,800 for other fixed costs. Prepare a flexible budget report. Step one is to prepare the flexible budget report chart. We start with the company name, Harrison Inc., the name of the report, manufacturing costs, flexible budget report, and the date, month ended January 31st. Then we add the necessary five columns with the headings of description, budget, actual, difference, and then finally a column which indicates if the difference is favorable, denoted with an F, or unfavorable, denoted with a U. Step two is to add all of the budgeted information. We start with the level of activity, which in this question is the units produced. This is the base that we'll use to calculate the total variable costs. If we go to the question, we can see that the budget was originally prepared for a production volume of 4,000 units. Is this the level of activity that we want to use for our flexible budget? And the answer is a hard no. Remember that a flexible budget is adjusted for different levels of activity. That's so that it can adapt to changes in the operations of the business. It recognizes that variable costs change with the level of activity, and in order to appropriately assess the variable costs, we need to use the level of activity from the actual results. We therefore have to use the actual production as the level of activity to produce our flexible budget. That would be actual production of 4,800 units. So in the budget column for the units produced, we use 4,800 units, the actual level of activity. Next is our heading, variable costs. Going back to the question, we're going to use the budgeted per unit variable costs to develop our flexible budget, right? We're gonna do a budget, so we have to use the budgeted information. Only the number of units produced changes to the actual production level of 4,800 units. So in this case, we're going to use the budgeted variable manufacturing costs per unit. Direct materials, $9. Direct labor, $16. Overhead, $20. Adding this to our chart, we see direct materials $9 per unit, direct labor $16 per unit, and overhead $20 per unit. We'll now use these per unit costs plus the units produced at the actual level, 4,800 units, to calculate the budgeted variable costs for January. 4,800 units multiplied by $9 per unit direct materials 
4,800 units multiplied by $16 per unit direct labor is equal to $76,800. 4,800 units multiplied by $20 per unit overhead is $96,000. And the total variable cost is equal to $43,200 plus $76,800 plus $96,000 for a total of $216,000. We can now move ahead and add in our monthly budgeted fixed manufacturing overhead, starting with depreciation of $12,000 and other fixed costs of $6,000. Returning to the chart, you can see that I had to shrink it in order to keep it all on the same slide. Sorry about that. Let's start with the title of fixed costs. We add in the depreciation, 12,000, and then the other fixed costs of 6,000 for a total fixed cost of $18,000. We then calculate the total manufacturing costs of $234,000, which is the total variable cost of 216,000 plus the total fixed cost of $18,000. Perfect. We can now move on to step three, add the actual information to the chart, starting with the actual production of 4,800 units. We're going to add it to the top of column three, actual, 4,800. We now need the actual variable costs, which come from the question. Actual direct materials, $48,000. Actual direct labor, $63,100. Actual variable manufacturing overhead, $100,800. Transferring these costs to the chart, we have direct materials, $48,000, direct labor, $63,100, overhead, $100,800. Adding these three amounts together, we get total actual variable costs of $211,900. Let's move on to the actual fixed costs, which we get from the question. We have depreciation of $12,000 and other fixed costs of $6,800, which we place in our actual column. Depreciation, $12,000, other fixed costs, $6,800, for total fixed costs equal to $18,800. We're now at the point where we can calculate total manufacturing costs. Total variable costs of $211,900 plus total fixed costs of $18,800 is equal to $230,700. That's the total actual manufacturing costs for the month of January. We can now move on to step four, calculate the differences and indicate if they are favorable, denoted with an F, or unfavorable, denoted with a U. These differences, also called variances, are good for the company when they're favorable and bad for the company when they're unfavorable. We'll start with the units produced, and the difference between the budget and the actual is zero. That's exactly how it should be every time we produce a flexible budget at the same level of activity as the actual level of activity. So we'll just put a dash in the fifth column as this is neither favorable or unfavorable. Direct material shows a variance of $4,800, the difference between $43,200 budget and $48,000 actual. Is this good and therefore favorable or bad and therefore unfavorable for the company? Well, the costs are higher than what we had budgeted at the same volume. This indicates that management was not able to control their costs as the budget clearly indicates they should have. Therefore, this is bad for the company because costs are higher than expected at the same level of activity. This is therefore unfavorable, denoted with a U. Direct labor shows a variance of $13,700, the difference between $76,800 budget and the $63,100 actual. We see that actual costs are lower than expected, indicating that management clearly was able to control labor costs. This is positive for the company and therefore denoted with an F for favorable. Next, variable overhead shows a variance of $4,800, the difference between the $96,000 budget and the $100,800 actual costs. We can see right away that the actual costs are higher than expected, even at the same level of activity. This is bad for the company and therefore denoted with a U for unfavorable. We can now calculate the total variance for all the variable costs, the difference between the total budget of $216,000 and the total actual of $211,900. This results in a variance of $4,100. Actual costs are lower because of the savings in the direct labor, and that is good for the company. Hence, we put an F for favorable for this variance. Note that you could also have calculated the total variance by taking the difference between all of the favorable and the unfavorable variances. 
the results would have been the same, $4,100 favorable variance. Moving on to the fixed costs, we can see that budgeted and actual depreciation is identical, indicating that this variance is zero. Since it's not favorable or unfavorable, we simply put a dash in the indicator column. Other fixed costs are budgeted for $6,000 and the actual is $6,800, a difference or variance of $800. Actual costs are higher than budgeted, so this is an unfavorable variance, denoted with a U. This is the same for the total fixed costs, a variance of $800 from the difference between the budgeted total fixed costs of $18,000 and the actual fixed costs of $18,800. Actual costs are higher than the budget, which is unfavorable, denoted with U. Finally, if we look at the total manufacturing costs, we can see the difference between the total budgeted costs of $234,000 and the total actual costs of $230,700, a $3,300 variance. Because total actual costs are lower than the total budgeted costs at the same level of activity, the variance is favorable, denoted with an F. What can upper management do with the results of this flexible budget? Remember, the only reason we can compare the variable costs between the budget and the actual is because the units produced are identical. That's why we can go and investigate the direct materials and the overhead. Talk to the individuals who are in charge of these areas to determine exactly why they were not controlling costs. In addition, we can go to the individual who controls the direct labor and we can give them a a pat on the back or maybe a bonus because they actually controlled their costs. The question now becomes who should upper management speak to about the variances they find? Generally, we look at responsibility accounting to ensure we evaluate the performance of managers who have control over the costs that they are being evaluated on. But that's a topic for a future video. As always, thanks so much for watching.